بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمدللہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبینا محمد وعلى آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد A beautiful principle in the Ahl al-Sunnati wal-Jama'ah is the principle of avoiding rebellion. And Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Rajihi, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, mentioned in his, uh, or actually it wasn't Shaykh Abdulaziz al-Rajihi, this is uh, Shaykh, uh, Shaykh Sa'ad ibn Nasr, uh, ibn Abdulaziz, ibn Habib, uh, al-Shatri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, one of our mashayikh in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And may Allah preserve all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah. He mentioned a very important principle regarding Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, regarding you know rebellion and revolting against the leader and and all these things and protesting against the leader, which we see the people, unfortunately, uh, involving themselves in and getting uh, excited about, uh, you know gaining their rights by any means necessary instead of looking at the Sharia ways of gaining their rights. So the Sheikh mentioned after talking and discussing about the chaos and the uh, the harm and wickedness that is usually spread throughout the earth from rebelling against the Muslim authority even if he's a, a wicked sinner that by rebelling, and we, and we witness this in, in, in the contemporary um, conflicts that we see with the case of now what's going on in Syria. Not say, that, that leader is not even a Muslim anyway, Bashar. But, you know, for those, uh, the point is the people still didn't have the ability to overthrow him and it's only caused harm in the region and especially for the people of Syria being refugees, being attacked, being slaughtered, being gassed, and all the other evil and wicked things that are happening there. And may Allah preserve them and, and bless the people who died amongst them to be uh, martyrs. And may Allah bless them with genital verdose and grant us all forgiveness. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. So the Sheikh said, he mentioned, uh, you know, that these kind of things, they only result in chaos and, and, uh, and harm to the people. Even what we see in Egypt, even what we see in Iraq and these are, I'm mentioning these examples, these contemporary examples in the context of what the Sheikh is saying. So the Sheikh said, then he brought the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Quran, which uh, affirm the position of Ahl Sunnah, that the, the Salaf of this Ummah, the pious predecessors, they were united upon these principles, that you should not rebel against the Muslim authority, and that only if the Muslim authority has left the fold of Islam and it's become clear that they are no longer a Muslim and the people who have the ability to determine this have determined this and if he is violating Islam and the rights of the people and killing the people and what have you and you have the ability because all of your worship in Islam is uh, it becomes legislated if you have the ability to fulfill it that if you are unable, for example, the person, even in the simplest forms of the prayer, the prayer, you can, you know, you don't have an excuse to leave your prayer. You know, you can pray it even with your eyelids if you do not have the ability to move your, uh, your limbs and so forth. But if you are no longer conscious, then the obli obligation of the salat is removed from you because you don't have the ability to perform that act of worship. And likewise, the same with rebelling that if the the leader has l clearly left the fold of Islam and they're killing and slaughtering the people and if uh, the people do not have the ability meaning it's going to cause a greater harm by trying to rebel against him and remove him then they should not and so the Sheikh then mentioned some of the verses in the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al -kareem, Wala tufsidu fil ardi ba da Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-A'raf uh, he subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not cause wickedness in the land after it has been rectified, you know, after, after uh, peace or righteousness. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says also in Surah Al-Ma'idah, وَتَعَوْنَ عَلَىٰ بِرِّ وَتَقْوَىٰ وَلَا تَعَوْنَ عَلَىٰ إِثْمِ وَعُدْوَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and cooperate together in righteousness, in God-fearfulness. But do not, and do not cooperate in wickedness and sinfulness. So Allah orders us to work together as a community in righteousness and prohibits us from working together in wickedness. 
and sinfulness by rebelling, cursing, attacking, all these things which are un-Islamic uh, activities or being violent or extreme or being a person of bid'ah or being a sinful, you know, sinful person. You know, we can't work together in drinking alcohol or committing adultery or fornication. We can't establish a website for that to, uh, to, to help facilitate that or whatever. But instead, we cooperate together in righteousness. So, then the Sheikh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala قال, فَصَبْرُ عَلَىٰ أَذَائِهِمْ أَوْلَىٰ مِنْ خُرُوجِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَمُقَاتِلِهِمْ So he said, being patient on their harm is foremost, and you know, and being forbearing is foremost or is more, uh, right, uh, you know, is for should come before rebelling against them and fighting them. Meaning that you should not, even if they're harmful to you, they're causing the leaders cause, causing harm to you. As many a hadith you'll find in Sahih Muslim in the chapter of Imara, uh, Kitab al Imara, uh, the chapter of leadership, you'll find that the Prophet Sallallahu told us not to rebel against the leader. And that's, go to Sahih Muslim, and you'll find the whole chapter is, is based upon that. So then the Shaykh said, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he said, وَهَذَا مِنْ بَابْ اِرْتِكَابَ أَخَفَ ذَرَرَيْنِ لِدَفَعَ أَعْلَاهُمَا وَهِيَ قَعَيْدَ in the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Beautiful thing. He said, this is a principle of Ahl Sunnah. So Ahl Sunnah, this is what we believe. We can't say what the Takfiris believe. We can't see, say what the Qutubiyin believe, or the Sururiyin believe, or uh, Akhwana Muslimin, or Jamata such and such, or Jamata such and such, or the, the, um, uh, any of those various groups and sects. But this is what Ahl Sunnah believes. The Salaf of this Ummah up until now, the Salafiyun, those people who follow Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the Minhaj or methodology of the Salaf of this Ummah. This is what we believe. He said, he said, وَهِيَ قَعِدَةٍ in the Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. This is a principle with Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. He said, and this is the from the position of following the lesser of the two evils, meaning you have two and, and and protecting yourself from the harm, the most harmful of it. So, meaning that when you have two harms, this principle states that if you have two bad things, your options are only negative. That you should take the least damaging of those two things. You should take the least of the two harmful ways. So it is harmful. Uh, it is more harmful to rebel against the, the authority that you cannot remove. Meaning the, you know, if this uh, leader has left the fold of Islam or this leader is a, a wicked sinner that it's, uh, that, but still a Muslim and he's wicked, but he's harming the people, taking their wealth, take, violating their rights, it is still more harmful to rebel against him if you don't have the ability especially to remove him than it is to just be patient with his, his harm. And you're defending yourself from spreading more evil. Why? Because, for example, look at what's happened in Iraq. They still don't have peace in that country. And the Shia now are in charge and they're slaughtering Ahl Sunnah. And, and then you have extremists from uh, the Al-Qaeda and people like this causing uh, uh, bombs and explosions and attacking people during their pilgrimage, blowing up m m we don't. We're not happy with any of that. But the point is they removed a wicked leader like Saddam Hussein and now... The country is in turmoil for now, 2003, the invasion happened, to now what? 2013. Ten years of turmoil. How can we be pleased with that? Likewise, what's going on in, in Syria? Likewise, what's happened in, uh, in Libya? The people in Libya just still don't have peace. They removed Qaddafi. But now look. Look at the turmoil and the hatred and, and things that are going between the communities. And we ask Allah the Almighty to protect our evil and protect us from the harm and to take the Sabila Mu'mineen, the Sabila Ahl Sunnah, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Nabiya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.